Blessings, 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 everyone, my Royal Platinum family. This is I'm Ruby Florida Network. We're coming to you live. Yes, live with this Biblical Expressions webinar. Yes, live with our Biblical Expressions webinar. And so we're shaking up some things the way we're doing it in I'm Ruby Florida. Hallelujah. We're excited about it. We're excited about all the great things that the Lord has done for us, all the great things he's doing now in our present, and what the great, excellent, dynamic things, miraculous things is he's doing in our future. Hallelujah. So we're coming to you tonight with a great topic. We're going to come back soon in a couple of weeks, and we're going to be live on our radio show broadcast. Platinum will be ready or present. I'm Ruby Florida Network Biblical Expressions live on the air, but for right now, we're going to be shaking it up and shifting up a little bit. We're going to be doing worship where sometimes we'll be doing on the webinar live video where you can see our notes and then sometimes we're live on the air so either way we're happy that you you and you thank you for tuning in with us tonight we are excited hallelujah about all the great things that the lord is doing i'm telling you god is shifting great things into our lives and he's allowing us my god to be connected to him in a way that we ever had before Hallelujah. Just where you are, just begin to worship God. Begin to thank him. Let him know how much you love him, how much you appreciate him, how much you honor and adore him. Let him know that you are so grateful and thankful for the gift of this day as we're winding down our night. Just begin to thank God that today was a great day. Just right where you are, thank God that tonight is a dynamic night right where you are. Thank God that you can even thank him. Don't you know it's some people all over the world in our age groups that don't have the mindset to even remember to thank God? Come on now. There's people all over the world that in our age groups don't even have the ability to move their hands or have the ability to speak. Don't even have the ability to say, Lord, don't even remember who the Lord is because they have dementia or they have Alzheimer's or their mind is just not at the place where it should be. But my God, we have the mind tonight to thank him. So we're not going to go forward with Bible, Bible, biblical expressions tonight until we begin to thank him and tell him how much we love him. One thing that the Lord has let us know over the last couple of years about God, G-O-D, gratitude opens doors. God is all about gratitude and gratitude is all about God. When you begin to thank him, you begin to be grateful for the things that you have and you begin to just, my God, appreciate the things that you have. It allows you, it automatically opens doors for greater things. Come on now, somebody. It opens up doors for greater things in your life. And it begins to allow you to get into a place of celebration. It takes you into a place of glee. It takes you into a place of rejoicing him and being joyful and have euphoric love for him. You just have a euphoric love. You have euphoria wrapped up in one is love and you begin to love on him and just just thank him for being in your life and for always being there faithful a faithful love he's just a faithful love that is who and what god is and just celebrate him for his greatness his excellence and his majesty hallelujah we won't be before you long tonight because it is late um it's 11 22 p.m eastern time so we're just gonna go forward with tonight's study. This study right here, it's not even really a topic for this study. This study tonight is just so powerful all by itself. That's why we're doing a video webinar of our biblical expressions tonight. So you can just follow along with the notes. So you don't have to say, well, just give us the notes, send us the notes. Here you are tonight. And so we're coming out of 2 Kings 3, verse 8 through 23, out of Names of God Bible. Now, you can read this topic or this subject tonight in any single Bible you choose. But tonight, we're using the name of God. It just goes deeper. And huh, God is just doing some deep things. And so we're excited. All right. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Verse 8. Jerom asks, which road should we take? Now, Jerom was a king. And if you study the whole 2 Kings 3, it talks about the three kings. Somebody say the Trinity is finna show out. My God. Now, that could be any 
if that can be any topic for this, it'd be the Trinity is about to show out. My God. It says, Jerome asks, which road should we take? <laughs> Jehoshaphat answered, and that's the king as well, the road through the desert of Edom. Now, we're going to stop right there. Now, King Jehoshaphat, which is a king, he picked the road where it's dry. Uh, somebody say God is up to something dynamic. He picked a road that is strictly dry, a desert. The desert of Edom, if you do the research and do the study, the desert of Edom is one of the most driest, hot, humidified deserts it was in the biblical times. And he could have picked any other desert, but he chose the desert of Edom. My God. <laughs> and if you begin to study um, about Edom, 2 Samuel lets us know in 2 Samuel 6 and 5 and 6, that's about Oba Edom. And Oba Edom was... Um, a worshiper. He was a worshiper. He was a he was an armor bearer to King David. He was a man of righteousness and know how to worship God. And if you're wondering why we're not saying worship, because ships sink. We're talking about shift where it chains and goes into spheres and dimensions and realms. And so Oba oh, Edom, the Bible says that King David, and if you read it for yourself, it'll bless your life. Just read to start with 2 Samuel 5 and 6, and it will bless your life. And so it lets us know that King David got a little bit frustrated. You know, we all have been there. That he got a little frustrated, and he just said, you know what, I'm going to get an ark, ark of the covenant. I'm going to give the presence of God to Oba Edom. So he gave it to Oba Edom. Oba Edom being the man that he was, the worst shifter that he was, Okay, go ahead and bring it on in my house. The Bible says that Obed Edom, Obed Edom means he obey kingdom. Obed Edom whole entire household was blessed for 90 days because he allowed the ark, the presence, the covenant connections. My God, being one, communication, communion with God, his entire household, his entire family was blessed for 90 days that the whole Jerusalem, the whole, my God, area heard about it, had to go back to the king himself and said, did you see or you hear about what the Lord is doing for Obed Edom's house? That King David had to go back and get the Ark of the Covenant. Come on now. Now, what does that mean? That means that, this place of desert, Edom, symbolizes, it may seem dry. It may be a hot, humidified place. It may be a place that you probably can even breathe in. Oh, my God. some We're going to go somewhere tonight. It might be a place that you cannot truly even breathe in. But if you just stay the course, that's it. If you keep moving forward, if you stay in position, if you stay in the race, you will see a manifestation all right, let's go to verse 9. So the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. Now, isn't it so amazing how the king of Judah would symbolize praise? Somebody going to get this. He suggested that they go to the king of Edom's dry place. He suggested that we take the desert of Edom. He suggested that we take praise. Come on now. Praise. So my God suggested. My God made a comment, made a remark that we begin to go through the desert, the dry place. We're going to go through the most difficult place that we can go to, the road, the most difficult road, the most, oh, my God, test, the road that gives us many tests, is going to give us a many detours, oh, my God, going to give us many places for us to go through. This is the place that we go. <laughs> what is you saying on tonight? In the midst of whatever it looks like, sounds like, or feels like, whenever you have praise in your life, whenever you let praise suggest which way to go, whenever you allow praise to allow you to go through that place, you're going to see a manifestation. It says, and the king of Edom took an indirect route to Moab. See? Ah, after seven days, somebody say completion, wholeness, breakthrough, freedom, and total healing, my God. After seven days, the, they ran out of water for the army and the animals. See, they ran out of water because praise suggested to go somewhere, but they end up in a different route. See, because Edom was the place that you probably would end up 
in the desert of sin or zen. You might end up in any place because it was one of the most difficult deserts. It was like, if you ever been in a desert before, and I don't know if you ever been to Las Vegas because we stay there, and I mean, it's, it's a place of illusion. I mean, it is definitely, oh, my God, <laughs> mirages there. You would think one place is close by and it'd be so much heat and hot to go. So if you've been to Arizona or Vegas or any place in that area or even Dubai or somewhere where it's hot in the desert, you know automatically that those places have mirages and it would take you into an indirect route. It would take you to another detour it'll take you somewhere you trying to go but you'll go the opposite way because of construction or because of things taking place come on we gonna get this we almost there we almost reeling this thing in we reeling in the fishing rod we done threw out the rod but we about to reel in this great big huge fish come on now it says verse 10 the king of israel said oh no yahweh has put the three of us at the mercy of the people of moab my god <laughs> my God, if you know about Moab and you know the history of Moab, Moab was the place that Ruth, King David, great-grandmother, was from. And Moab was a place of drought, poverty, lack, struggle, confusion, hurt, idolatry, rage. Um, It was a place of sinister, sinisterism. It was a place of sadism. It was a place where they worship Moloch and they worship Chemosh and Baal. I mean, it was a place of all different types of demonic things and evil and negative things. So, uh, they had to go through this to know that even in this place of Moab, in this place in the desert, I, God, would give you victory. Come on now. Somebody say my breakthrough is in the midst of all this. Uh, say, touch yourself on your head and say, my breakthrough is in the midst of all this. Don't you know that that Moab place in your life, that confusion, that lack, that struggle, that pain, that hurt, that poverty place, don't you know a breakthrough is in the midst of all that? Don't you know that place, that desert place, that eat them, that place that look dry, that place to take you to another direction when you plan on going straight, but you have to go backwards, that you plan on going right, but you go left. That place will give you a breakthrough in the midst of all this. Touch yourself one more time and say, I am obtaining a blessing and a breakthrough in the midst of all this. I am obtaining a blessing and breakthrough in the midst of all this. My God. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 11, but Jehoshaphat asks, isn't there a prophet of Yahweh whom we could ask? See, see that? <laughs> he just let that be known. Before we even move forward, before we do anything, we got to talk to the Lord first. Now, this is what we love about King Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat was a king of Judah, praise, okay? He don't have to really answer to anybody. He can just make his own decisions and do what he needs to do because he's the king. He make the rules. But however, he had respect of God that he had to ask the man or woman of God, whoever it may, whoever the prophet was at that moment, that he needed to talk to to get the answers from God. My God, we're going to go somewhere. We're pulling in all the fish. The net and the rod is out there, and we're going to reel it on in. It says, one of the officials of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here. Here, having enormous riches every day. H-E-R-E. -E. See? Okay. He used to be Elijah's assistant. Verse 12. Jehoshaphat said, Yahweh word is with him. <laughs> so King Jehoshaphat of Judah, the king of Israel, and the king of Edom went to Elisha. See, he knew. He already knew what time it was. He knew that the seer Elisha had a raiment word. He knew that it was a logos word. He knew there was a belly word, a word that was going to come out of his mouth that was going to be effective. And King Jehoshaphat was in a place where if it took a week, uh, mm, if it took a month, if it took six months, if it took a year, if it took six years, whatever how long, he knew that the word was coming forth. And because of King Jehoshaphat's humbleness, you'll see what's about to take place. Touch yourself and say, I am humble. Uh, 
I am humble. I am humble. Verse 13 says, Elisha asked the king of Israel, why did you come to me? Go to your father's prophets or your mother's prophets. See, Elisha, the see Elisha was like, look, I know what you, you don't normally come to God for no answers. You normally go to other stuff. You go to Baal, you go to all Baal prophets. Come on, now you go to Shira prophets, Astra prophets. You go to Moloch prophets. You go to Dagon prophets. You go to everybody else. You go, you worship everything except God. So you go and you talk to them. But listen to this. Somebody know Proverbs 21 and 1 says the king's heart, the individual of high position hearts is in the hand as the Lord of the rivers of waters. He turn it whatever way he chooses. The king of Israel answered him, no. Yahweh has called the three of us in order to put us at Moab's mercy. Now, ah, verse 14. Elisha answered, I solemnly swear as Yahweh Sabaoth. And if you want to know what Yahweh Sabaoth means, it means the Lord of hosts. Yahweh Sabaoth, whom I serve, lives. I wouldn't even bother to look at you or notice you if it weren't for my respect for King Jehoshaphat of Judah. My God. Verse 15, but get me someone to play some music. Now, let's start right there. See, this goes back to the worship. See, because, mm, because King Jehoshaphat was a king, right? And because he symbolized praise, in order for the man of God, the seer, the seer, the prophet Elisha to go forth with a rhema word, he had to get in worship. He had to get in praise mode. He had to hear. See, a lot of times us as men and women of God, kingdom believers, saints, whatever, you know, we call ourselves some, we, some of us call ourselves kingdom believers. Some of us call us saints. Some of us call us Christians. Some of us call them men and women of God, God's children. We all, it's all the same. We all are God's children, chosen generation. So when we get into this place where we are leadership as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and we get into this place where we just want to give somebody right away. See, even though the see Elisha words never fell to the ground, ever fell to the ground, he, he didn't have a word right then. He had to worship. He had to praise, have a praise shift and a worship experience an explosion with the Lord in order for them to give them an answer, an accurate answer anyway. You see what I'm saying? So from this moment on, do not allow people to tell you to give them an answer if you just don't have it. If you got to worship and pray shift and get yourself into a place where you're hearing from God and give it to him. If you don't have one, hey, when I get one, I give it to you. You see what I'm saying? Because in this hour as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and children of God, we cannot miss it. We have to be in a place where we're humble like King Jehoshaphat. And even though we have a high grade position, we're willing to listen to the word of the Lord from somebody else. King Jehoshaphat could have been in that place where he went on and did what he needed to do. But even the other two kings knew better than that. Come on. Now, they told Elisha, no, we didn't need what they had to say. My mother prophets and my daddy prophets. We need to hear what you got to say because the Moab is at our mercy. We're going to find favor, my God, to obtain the things of God. Okay. Come on. We really this. We really these nets in. My God. <laughs> oh, my God. It says, while the musician was playing, Yahweh's power came over Elisha. Somebody say the spirit of the Lord fell upon him, the Ruach. Hakadesh, which is the Hebrew word for the spirit of the living God, of the sovereign Lord, came in immediately upon him. See, he had to worship. Verse 16, he said, this is what Yahweh says. Make this valley full of ditches. Now we're going to stop right there. What are you saying, see Elisha? What are you saying, prophet? What are you saying, man of God? This is the desert. This is Moab. This is... <laughs> This is a place where nothing grows. You telling me to put some ditches in a dry place? Whoo, my God. Yes, I'm telling you, my child, to put ditches in a dry place. Yes, I'm telling you, my child, when it looks like nothing going to happen, put some ditches. I'm telling you, my child, to prepare. Get yourself in preparation for the healing. Get yourself in preparation for the breakthrough. Get yourself in preparation for the mental shifting, the cerebral shifting. Get yourself in a 
preparation for the peace. Get yourself in preparation for the marriage. Get yourself in preparation for the marriage to be reconciled. Get yourself in preparation where the new anointing ignites you. Get yourself into a place where uh, the wealth is coming in, the money is coming in. Get yourself in a place where you're laying hands on the sick. Get yourself in a place where you're going out evangelizing all over the world. Get yourself in a place that all doors, cage doors are open and ever will be shut again. Get yourself into a place where you're in preparation to prepare this manifestation that you seek. Mm. Lord God. Verse 17. You will not see winter rain. Ah, so we're going to start right there because it's Paul. That means think about it. You will not see winter rain. See, this next miracle and breakthrough and all this, you getting a breakthrough that's about to take place, you ain't going to see it. <laughs> it ain't going to be the win. That's something that's heavy and something that you expect to come. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be the rain because you can smell a hit at when it drops and comes down because it comes normally rain and thunder and winds and it comes with lightning sometimes. It's not going to be that. It's not going to come in the way that you package up to be. It's not going to come in the way that you think it to be. But it's going to, listen to this, but ah, this valley will be filled with water. Mm. That means it's an unknown source. Ah, my God. An unnamed, oh my God, tapped in source. An unnamed power from God. An unknown, unusual, unexplainable manifestation that's going to take place that you don't know nothing about. You don't have a clue about. You don't know nothing about. You don't even know where it's coming from, when it's coming from, how it's coming, and which way it's coming. But all you need to know that it's done. My God, this manifestation that's taking place as God's infinite prosperity in the body of Christ in the kingdom, his exuberant harmony of God with his joy that's empowering us with strength, courage, and energy with his dominion that is allowing us to be God's chosen vessel. So when you obey and dig these ditches, you will see this breakthrough in the desert. My God, my God, my God, speak to us tonight. He said, you, your cattle, and your other animals will drink. Now, we're going to start right there. Let's just stop right there for a minute, everyone. Just begin to just think about this. This manifestation is taking place. Everything surrounding your life is going to eat. Your cattle, that means if you got a pet. Come on now, the pet going to eat. The pet kids going to eat. Your family, your friends. Matter of fact, the people that mention your name, they don't like you, they going to eat. Everything surrounding you, people at your job, at your business, your spiritual family, your natural family, everybody. Ray, Ray, Nay, Nay, Aunt, Bay, Bay, all those people. Everybody is going to eat and drink. They will drink. Verse 18, Yahweh considers that an easy thing to do. See, God considered it that it's the least I can do to bless you and make sure you drink. It's the least I can do to make sure that you don't uh, die in this wilderness and starvation. It's the least I can do to make sure that all is well in your life. It's the least I can do to bless you to be healed. It's the least I can do to make sure you have a home to stay. It's the least I can do to make you prosperous in your business. It's the least I can do to allow you to walk in the anointing. It's the least I can do is that you can walk in knowing my supreme faith is with you and my global shifting is taking place. It's the least I can do that you know that I love you and I care about you and I'm concerned about your life. My God, it's the least I can do, declares Yahweh. See, it's the least he can do. It's the least. Mm. The least he can do. Ah, you should thank him and say, Lord, I thank you for considering. It says, in addition, he will put Moab at your mercy. See that? In this moment of your life, in this hour, and this powerful, oh my God, beautiful, dynamic, epilistic year, God is putting everything around you in your life that looked like it can be your Moab, which is a dry place, the desert, situations, challenges, enemies, frenemies, whatever it may be in your life, he's going to put at your mercy. That the Bible says, if a person waits, 
If your ways pleases God, he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. He'll even allow the people that is coming against you to call you blessed because he's giving mercy upon your life because he considering it. Mm. Somebody touch yourself and say, I thank God for considering it. Oh, my God. He said, verse 19, you will defeat every walled city, every walled city, and every important city. You will cut down every good tree, seal all the wells, and use rocks to ruin every good piece of land. You see that? Not only when you dig the ditches in the dry place in your Moab, he's going to give you all the tools and essentials to get the job done. He's going to give you every strategy that you need to complete the task because of your obedience. Don't you know when God gives a word of the Lord, whether it's from the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher, or he give you a word, a word to you to do and you obey that, you be blessed. These men were kings. You understand? See, this is what we're not getting. These three kings were kings. We kings today don't ask nobody really for nothing. Kings today don't beg. They decree. They make legislations. They make depositions. They make laws. They make commands. They make fiats. They don't ask anybody anything. But because these kings was humble enough to know that they didn't have all the answers and that they went to the man of God, the seer, the prophet of God, that is why they was victorious. See, in this hour, in this moment, the Lord let us know we don't have it all. We can go to someone else to ask them the answers. That's why we're supposed to have a covering. That's why we're supposed to have someone we can go to and we can talk to and we can ask answers. We can have someone. Now, in this day and age, this is a Bible study and biblical expressions. In this day and age, people don't feel they got to ask nobody nothing. And that's why we don't see the victorious manifestations as King Jehoshaphat and the King of Edom. And that's why we don't see it as these three kings seen. Because this day and age, we think we could just go to God ourselves. Like, we just got all the answers. Now, if we really be honest with ourselves, we don't have to put anything on, on this Bible study and comment or anything, but with ourselves. If we really knew all the answers, wouldn't we think we'd be farther along where we are? Let's be honest. So that is why these kings prosperous as they were. Because if you study about King Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat was so prosperous, he had a whole city full of wine, a whole city full of bread. He was a whole zip code. You understand? He was prosperous. But he knew that he had have the answers for victory. He knew that he needed to hear the word from the Lord. So when we humble ourselves and when we get into a place where we know that God has someone in our lives in position to give us the directions and the guidance and the instructions of God, we can and will shall be successful. My God, Lord, you are so amazing. Then it says, oh my God. It says, verse 20, this is what happened in the morning. See, come on now. At the time of the grain offering, water flowed from Edom and filled the countryside. You see that? In the morning, in the morning, a manifestation taking place. Come on now, somebody. In the morning, in the morning, a manifestation taking place. In the morning, my God, a miracle taking place. In the morning, because of their obedience. Now, think about this for a moment. For a moment. Wonder if those men would have not dig the ditches. Wonder if they would have not obeyed the word of the Lord from the sea, Elisha. Imagine what could have taken place and what could have happened in their lives. Verse 21. All the people of Moab heard that the kings had come to fight them. Huh, you see that? Now see what happened? The men weren't coming to fight right away. The men were trying to find out what's going to go on. They wanted mercy on their side. They wanted mercy on their behalf. They wasn't thinking nothing about that. But because, you know, that's how it is. Whenever something, a breakthrough, a blessing got to come, here comes the negative forces. Here come the demonic forces. Here come... You know, Satan, Lucifer, the no names, here they come. They come in to try to, you know, cause confusion because God is not an author of confusion to make you, to make someone come up against you so it can get out the way the Lord said things are going to go down. It says, so all men old enough to bear arms were called to fight. See, so 
now they they paranoid. See, there you go. Paranoid, delusional, you know, thinking that they coming to fight them. But that wasn't the case. They was trying to get victory. Come on, straight up just sweatless victory. Come on now, some victory that we ain't got to do nothing but praise. Come on, like a Judah, like a judge won. Who shall we send? Judah. They had Judah, rep, Judah president there, Judah king there. So Judah, hey, King Jehoshaphat just wanted to go through a worship shift and pray shift and this is it. You know, like the, the sea Elisha just did. He said, send a minstrel, send a harper, send a, a worshiper, send, send a worshiper here and allow these things to take place. That's all he or they was looking for. Then it says in verse 22, when the mobile got up early in the morning as the sun was rising over the water they saw the water from a distance see that they saw the water from a distance you see that they saw it from a distance now this was a dry desert come on now this was a place where nothing was no water was there but because they dig them ditches in the ground it filled up oh my god somebody say that my manifestation it's coming from the ground up. Come on, my God. My man, manif this manifestation right here, this next miracle is coming from the ground up. This manifestation right here is coming from an unusual source of God. This manifestation right here is a supernatural manifestation. It ain't coming from no winds. It ain't coming from no rains. It ain't coming from no thunder. It ain't coming from no lightning. It's coming from a, oh my God, a tapped in source of God that I don't even know that even existed. It's coming from a, a supernatural source that God is making up just for me because he considered me. It's coming from a place in God that he made just for me and my family and my people's people and my people's people connection to people, my God in the kingdom. This is what's taking place. Then it says, it was as red as blood. See, now check this out. The water that the Moabites saw in Moab, in the desert, became red like blood. Oh my God, have your way. Verse 23 said, they said, it's blood. The kings have been fighting one another and have killed each other. Now, Mobites, let's take their goods. See, the kings, oh, my God. Huh. You got to read this whole chapter. These people, oh, my God, was, my God, listen to, they really thought that king, the three kings fought each other and killed themselves because to them, the enemies, their, the enemies, they thought that the kings killed themselves and they thought that it was blood because from them, it looked like blood because it was an unusual source because it was a source of God. My God, it was a power of God, the spirit of God, the presence of God. My God, the dominion of God, the demonstration of God, the dimensions of God, the details of God, the design of God, the demographics of God. Oh my God. Because that's what that was. It looked in like blood. You remember the, the miracle that Jesus did in the book of John? Huh? He turned the what? The water into wine. This was prophetically speaking of what Jesus would do. When Jesus was on the cross, what came out of him? My God, his blood looked in like water and oil. See, this is the revelation of what the Lord is letting us know. That when you have faith in me, when you seek me, when you look towards me for help, when you put your hope in me and you listen to my instructions that I give you from the men and women of God, you will be productive and prosperous in all that you do. God is producing copious amounts of information, revelation, affirmations, proclamations, demonstrations for us right now in the kingdom, for us to dig the ditches. What do you mean dig ditches? Plant. Go out. Open. That means sow a seed in a place that you know you don't have. That means pray. That means prepare. That means get yourself in receiving mode, in obtaining mode. Get yourself in a place where you know that things that look dry. That means like if you God gave you a business to start and you say you only got $5, you better use that $5 to go ahead and get started with that business. Come on now. That means if God told you to go forth and ministry, that means you talk to your leadership to whoever is over you 
whatever church you go to, whatever ministry you are, and you talk to them so you can have everything in order so you can get that, that ministry going. That means the book. That means if you're desiring to get married, that means prepare yourself. Clean out your drawers for your husband and your wife. That means get certain areas. That means fix up or sleep on one side of your bed. Whatever it is that you have, that means you're healing. Only speak healing. Stop putting up them statuses talking about you got a headache. Stop putting up them statuses talking about you got a stomach ache. Stop putting up them statuses, oh, the doctor said this and the doctor said that. Yeah, the doctor said this. That is the reality in it, reality of it. But you, we don't live in reality. We live in supernatural dimensions. Come on now. We live in supernatural realms of God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God don't live in time. He lives in eternity. And eternity is dimensions. Ah, we are the individualization of God. We are created in his image and likeness. When he said, let us create humankind, human being, man in our image. He said, us, let us, the Trinity, these three kings, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the trifecta, the triumph, the triune. When he said that, he was speaking multiplication. He was speaking increase. He was speaking prosperity. He was speaking healing. He was speaking love. He was speaking life. He was speaking blessings, but not just blessings, blessings with happiness. The Bible says, blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. And if you read in other translations, it says, happy is the people who God is the Lord. Mean blessed and happiness one, my God. So, if this is the case, and this is what God is saying, then what do we need to be doing? We need to allow ourselves to get into a place that we're having gratitude, that we're grateful that we're producing, that we're grateful that we're digging ditches. We're grateful that he considered us. We're grateful that he has a man and woman of God in our lives that we can go to and hear the word of the Lord. We're grateful that we're walking in the realms of God's divine movement. We're grateful that we are powerful, anointed, magnet, with the secrets to anointing, healing, Wealth, prosperity, ministries, overflow, greatness, excellence. We are that uh, apostolic, that prophetic, that evangelistic, that pastoral, that teaching magnet in the body of Christ, in the fivefold. So God has given us resources. And these ditches are resources. And these ditches are anointing. And these ditches are information and notes and love and fun and laughter and traveling and marriages and bodies being restored and unsolved mysteries being, oh my God, people being finding out about their families and oh my God, their children is being sold into um, slavery, demonic sex slavery is coming home and oh my God, just everything is in the law of oneness, the, the wholeness of God, the unification, the way God designed it, it's taking us back to Genesis 11. I know it's a song that says, I'm sitting, um, going back to Eden, sitting on top of the world. Going back to Genesis 11, where we all was in unity and that the Lord, once again, as he came in Genesis, he came down a lot with the Trinity and say, look at them. See all of them and all of their unification and a synergy and a God's harmony. They can do anything when they put their minds to it, when they're together as a whole. And so these three kings and other parts and other nationalities and other regions and other counties and other countries came together to have victory. So in those ditches, of the life that God has designed for you. But we have to be willing and obedient. We have to. Isaiah 1 and 19 says, when we are willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. We have to. These men of God, if they would not have listened to the sea Elisha, oh my God, imagine what could have happened. But because of the act of obedience, don't you know that? Because of that. When we begin to listen and dig ditches, as the Lord said, he designs us to be destined for magnificence. Let's say that again, my God, we hear you. When we begin to obey and dig those ditches and listen to the word of the Lord, he designs us to be destined for magnificence. 
When we begin to dig those ditches, marvels and manifestations happen in our lives because we made them happen because we obeyed the Lord. God wasn't going to do it himself. See, God allowed the water to come supernaturally. You see that? He allowed the angels of the Lord to bring that. He blew his Ruach breath. He blew his Ruach Hakadesh there. He did what he needed to do. So he allowed it to happen. But if they hadn't have did the work, it wouldn't have been no water. So see, we made it happen because we was one with God. The Father and I are one. Oh, Lord, have your way tonight. When we begin to dig those ditches, we are attracting all the desires that we yearn for and we pray about air from everywhere every day. Why? Because of that humbleness and that act of obedience. And that is what taking place with those men of God. That is what happened to them. Because they begin to get into a place where they begin to speak life and they begin to see life change right before their eyes. This movement that these three kings had was tenacious faith. This is the this is what the see Elisha had in 2 Kings 2, 9 to 13. He had this in the beginning. When he first asked for the double portion, he was already speaking into existence because that double portion, once again, is here. It's the triple portion. So no matter what challenge come your way, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, feels like, no matter what they, nay, they, they, whoever say, no matter what the no names say, no matter what negative forces say, no matter what you say, no matter what the enemy say, no matter what the I-N-A-M-E, in or me says, tenacious faith is for you because you're digging them ditches. It's a consent form from heaven that is unleashed in the earth. My God. This was a consent form that was given to these men after the spirit of the Lord fell upon to see Elisha in power, there was a consent form. You dig ditches, I got you. You don't dig ditches, you lose. We all in the body of Christ want God to do something for us, but don't do what we need to do. It's required. If you go back and you read this chapter, there's the King Jehoshaphat says, is there a prophet of the Lord that we can inquire of? See, inquire, require. See, we want to inquire of what God's saying, but it's a requirement that we must do to obtain the blessing. Well, Lord, I desire this. Oh, Lord, the prophet said, yes, the prophet, the man, the woman of God said this, but what is, you have requirements that you have to do. I'm going to make your name great. Of course I am, but I need requirements for you to do. I'm going to give you water, but I need you to dig these ditches. Oh, my God. I'm going to bless you and call your name to the nations, but I need you to do this. So we must get into a place where we're listening and obeying God. When we do that, oh my God, endless and limitless and timeless and ageless. Oh my God, surplus, bountiful, miracles, manifestations, overflow, healings, revivals take place. In our lives, like the Lord said, I'll let your cattle eat. Come on, everybody gonna eat. Everybody going to drink because of our act of obedience. We all are inquiring God to do something. That's why you listen to this Bible study tonight. You're inquiring God to do something. If you found us on YouTube, you was inquiring and looking for something. If you see us on social media, you was inquiring and looking for something. If you're a part of our I'm at Ruby Network, Globe and I'm Ruby, Florida, you was inquiring for something. But there's requirements of you that you must do to obtain this type of manifestation. It was only one thing they had to do. D-I-G. D-I-G. Dominion is greatness. My God. Doing and notable goodness. See, when you do the things that God have chosen you to do, you see blessings. See, when you do that, oh my God. Desires increases God. Delight yourself in the Lord. He should give you the desires of your heart. D-I-G, desires increases God. Fresh, all these, de you see, you ain't saying I know this is all fresh because we're just sitting here just recording this and just letting the Lord have his way with this Bible study tonight because this word is fresh for us to you, for all of us. D-I-G, desires increases God. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37, 4, Psalms 20 and 4. 
Why is it in both of the fours? Because that symbolizes the Trinity plus you, four. These three kings, you see Elisha. These three kings, God. These three kings, the heavens. See that? When we begin to get ourselves into a place where we're really understanding who God is, what God is, how important God is, how we must obey God, how he is our life, how he is the center, the front, the back, the left, the right, the side, the side, the middle. He's just all areas and compacts of our lives. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's everlasting. He's alpha. He's omega. He's breath. He's life. He's movement. He's vibrations. He's channels. He's frequency. He's electricity. He's everything. Everything in this whole universe is God, and God is in universe, meaning that he's a part of everything. You see that? Not saying everything is God. We're saying that he's a part of everything. All things work together for our good. Good. God opens outstanding doors. Gratitude opens opulence demonstrations. Why? Because it's all work for our good. The Lord shared with us, the body of Christ focused so much on the negative and the bad things, we barely see the good things. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. We barely see the good things. Why do we barely see the good things? Because we so focus on the bad things. Tenacious faith is a consent form from heaven that is unleashed in the earth, universe, and realms of God's children. Tenacious faith is a legal authority in the heavens, universe, and stratosphere. See that? This mandate of digging the ditches in those three kings in that desert was a legal authority, a kingdom consent form from the universe into the stratosphere into the earth. And tonight, this study is the legal consent from the heavens for us tonight to know that we're chosen. We are representing these three kings, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. We're representing this. We're victorious tonight. Those men walked in sweatless victory. Ah, Ain't you at a place now that you are just fed up with just things seeing so hard for you? Come on now. You're fed up when you got to go extra hard for things to happen. How about when you dig those ditches and you prepare that you ain't going to have to do nothing because you didn't did what you had to do. You just sit back and let God do it. You did your part. You did the requirement because he inquired. You inquired then at the question. And you got it. You required a question, and he gave you an answer. Now you did your requirement after you got your answer. My God, have your way to every soul, every man, every woman, every child that's listening to this teaching tonight. Allow them to do the requirements of what you have told them, Lord. Tenacious faith is a kingdom government demand. This was a kingdom government demand for these men of God. They was to the kings. They was the king. They was the officials. It was a government demand. They had to do it. If not, they all would have just been taken out. They had to. Don't you know that thing that the Lord is requiring us tonight is a kingdom demand? It is a verdict of what is already done in the heavens and established in the earth universe. Their verdict was, you dig ditches, you win. That's your verdict. You don't dig ditches, you lose. Point blank. That's just, <laughs> oh my God, have your way with us tonight. That's the only verdict. You do what I tell you to do, you win. Your wisdom increases now. Your wealth increases now. Your worship increases now. Windows increases now. Witty adventures now. Witty ideas now. Wonderful is now. Everything, if you just begin to do what I say, your verdict is winning. My God. Tenacious faith is what has already been decreed. The Lord decreed it. <laughs> and verify by what already been declared. The Lord declared it. It was what it was said through to see Elisha. It was no if and no buts about it. How about these kings were so humble, they not like a lot of us in the day, in this day and age, in this 20th century, that they did what he said. Most of us would say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk to God and see what he said. God had already decreed and declared what's already done. He verified. He gave you your verdict. He gave you the exclamation of what you need to do. 
He gave you a question back with what you need to, you asked him. So why did you need to ask again? Okay, Lord. This movement was ecclesiastical dominion. It is a diplomatic power and the power of the mind, the power of the subconscious mind, the power of the God conscious mind, the left and right hemispheres of our mind movement to allow the power of the word and the power of the decree to take place. This tenacious faith is when we keep firm hold of God and we have a tight hold of him. And that's what's taking place with these men tonight. That's what's taking place with them. These three kings knew if they would dig them holes and follow the instructions and the word of the Lord through the sea of Elisha, they will obtain a manifestation. Point blank. They knew that. They just knew this is what's about to take place. And so they knew they had to. That's why they couldn't go to them fake prophets. Come on now. They couldn't go to them people that couldn't feed their spirit. Oh, my God. We're going to talk about three kingdom aspects of the supernatural true story tonight. And then we're going to be done. Number one. Sovereign regal favor. That's it. That's what they all had. Now, look, check this out, though. They all didn't have that. One of the individuals had that, but because he was there, all of them had it. And verse 14, to see Elisha let them know he would not even give them any time of the day if it was not for King Jehoshaphat. This royal diadem was the link and the plug. Prosperity leaves ultimate gifts to their breakthrough. You see that? King Jehoshaphat was a plug. Ain't no if and no buts about it. If King Jehoshaphat was not there, those other two kings would have been hit. Okay, hit and lit. But because King Jehoshaphat was there, symbolized praise. And because his great-grandfather was King David, that is the reason why he had favor. He gave he given them the favor that they had to have to obtain this blessing. Don't you know, someone can be in your life to be a plug. Every last one of us have a plug in our lives when it comes to the kingdom of God and to the supernatural movement of God. Somebody in our lives have that access. Somebody in our lives have the door open. Somebody in our lives are the plug, seriously. And they are the person that, you know, gives us favor or the person that links us to God's favor or give us the things that we desire from God. It's, it's always a plug in our lives. It is a plug that speak things into us and open up doors or allow, you know, the ministry to be transformed or allow us to access money or transfer ministries or, you know, go into man transfer manifestations or things like that. It's a place where it's a plug. It's a person. It's an individual. Everybody have a plug in their life. Every last one of us. I know who my plug is. I know who my plug is. And I love my plug and I'm happy about my plug. Some of us don't know who our plug is, or some of us do. We just don't want to because we don't feel that person should be our plug. Nine out of ten sometimes, see, they plug at first. They, their plug to get the answer was King Jehoshaphat. But they plug for God's spirit to manifest was the seer Elisha. It's always one person that will connect you to the next plug and the next plug and the next plug. And so that was their, their plug. Their plug, King Jehoshaphat, connected to the the, the supernatural plug, which is to see Elisha, and it allowed opulence and wondrous abundance and prosperity to manifest in their lives and it allowed the doors to open and the water to flow from dimensions of God that they never even seen before. And it allowed prosperity to take place because they knew that the mission from God was not an ordinary mission. See, when you know that your mission from God is not an ordinary mission, you better stay connected to your plug. My God. They are the individual that God have in your life's open doors. Think about this for a moment. What if King Jehoshaphat was not with them? They would have not gotten their miracle. However, because King Jehoshaphat knew and he said, let's call forth a prophet, he knew. He automatically knew. Huh, you could saw God for everything. See that? He knows if you are unsure, oh my God, you can call forth a prophet or someone in the kingdom of God. He knows not to make any decision on his own, in his flesh, and in his emotions. My God, speak to us tonight. See, he knew that. He knew that he could not at all do it on his own. When you are unsure of an answer, you go to someone that you know. If it's your pastor, 
your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist, your teacher, whoever it is that's over you, that watches over your soul, you go to them. Numbers, 20, Numbers 6 and 26 says, Yahweh will look on you with favor and give you peace. See that? He will look on you with favor. Remember, we just said that they had regal favor. See that? Second Chronicles 2020, the message version, one of our favorites. And this is what King Josephat did. Again, listen to this. They were up early in the morning. See, I'm telling you, praise gets up in the morning. Worst shifters get up in the morning, ready to march into the wilderness of Tekoa. See that? He just got, now think about this. King Jehoshaphat just got out of the wilderness of Edom and Moab, but then he going to another wilderness. Why? Because God is allowing praise. Because you're going to go through wilderness situations. You're going to go through wilderness challenges. You're going to go through wilderness things. But guess what? You're going to have victory no matter what. Mm. As they were leaving, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, listen, Judah and Jerusalem. Listen to what I have to say. Believe, and some virgins say have faith, firmly in God, your God, and your lives will be firm. Believe, some say have faith, in your prophets, and you will come out on top. Come on now, T.O.P. Transfers of prosperity. T.O.P. Tabernacle of praise. Come on now. T.O.P. Transformation of prophetic. See that? So when you begin to be in a place that you're having faith in the Lord God, you will be upheld. But have faith as leaders in the fivefold apostles, the prophets, evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, you will come out on top. Transfers of prosperity, tabernacle of praise, transformations of prophetic. Number two, they had a 24 hours overflow. Yes, they did. And verse 20 and 22, it says, in the morning, everything that God said through the man of God happened in an instant, rapid, and at a metatoric speed. You see that? It happened just like that. It happened so at a meteor fast speed. It happened instantly, expeditiously, right now, suddenly. It happened dynamically. It happened miraculously. It happened so quick, so fast, immediately. Because of the simple fact that they did the requirements of God. Psalm 65, 11 and 12 says, You crown the year with your goodness. And richness overflows wherever you are. The pastors in the desert, look at that, overflow with richness. Ha ha, the hills are surrounded with joy. Come on, we reeling in. We almost pulling in these, ha <laughs> ha, these fishes. We pulling in, we reeling in the rods. Come on now. It says, in the wilderness. So next time, whatever challenge you're going through right now, just start praising God right now. I mean, right now where you is, just start worshiping him. Come on, praise shifting him. Come on now. Because an overflow and richness is taking place. You just seen three different examples right here. Psalm 65, 11 and 12. 2 Chronicles 20, 20. He was in the wilderness of Tekoa. And, oh my God, it's 2 Kings 3. You just seen three different examples of wilderness situations and challenges for the men and women of God and how my God, how immediately richness and overflow taking place. Number three, last but not least, Trinity. Success, kingdom success, kingdom access, my God. Kingdom progress and process, my God. Success. In verse 19, the sea Elisha gives the prophetic layout of what is about to take place and how they should be, shall be victorious. You see that? He given them the kingdom layout, the outline, the prophetic layout outline of what needs to be done and what needs to happen, and they got it. Point blank. They got it because they did what was required of them. What is God requiring of you? What have a man or woman that God told you over the years or even told you this year or this month what you should do and you not doing it because you figure that you can do your own thing? Be like these three kings. Don't be like the Moab kings where they were delusional thinking of people trying to come after them. If you are in your mind and you're in a place where you think that somebody's trying to come after you or destroy you or sabotage you or don't want to see you move forward, don't want to see you go up, glow up or blow up or move up or realm up or whatever it may be, get that out your head. Because that is nothing but an illusion and that's a lie. Oh my God, it's a defeated foe. Rebuke it, cast it out, expel it, and keep it moving. Because the Lord has requirements of you that you have to do. He, you have acquired the man and woman of God. You acquired the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You acquired the people of God. God has given you what you need to do. 
and you need to do those things. You need to dig those ditches, whatever your ditches may be, because everybody's ditches is different, but you must be obedient. Psalms 149 and 4, Propel Kingdom Dimension Bible says, For the Lord Yahweh are excited, happy, delighted, and joyful in his children. He crowns the meek, gentle, and peaceful with triumph, sweatless victory, and success. See that? God is excited, happy, delighted, and joyful in his children. He crowns us, he crowns the meek, gentle, and peaceful with triumph, and he gives us sweatless victory and success. That's what he gave them. That's what he gave them. That's what he giving them. Questions tonight. And this is something just to think about. What is your faith saying to you tonight? What is the desert dry place saying to you tonight? Do you see the holes that you dig will be filled up with overflowing water? My God. Those are the questions. What is your faith saying to you tonight? What is the desert dry place saying to you tonight? And do you see the holes that you dig? will be filled up with overflowing water. What is it? What do you need to be doing? How do you need to be doing it? Who do you need to be connected to to do it? Who do you need to ask to forgive? What place you need to be at? How do you need to be there? What do you need to do? In Luke 1, Mary was a virgin, Jesus' mother, and we know the story. And she never knew no nothing of a man. So when this angelic being, Gabriel, the messenger angel, the archangel, came and visited her, she said, how could this be? I know not of a man. And he let her know, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and overpower you, and you will be pregnant. And then what did she say after that? Huh. She said, let it be done unto me just as you have spoken. See, just as he has spoken, just as the word has spoken. Let it be done. Let it be so. Let it be decreed. Let it be established in my life, just as you have spoken. Just as it's been spoken. You heard the word tonight that was spoken. Let it be decreed in your life. What is your faith saying to you tonight? What is the desert dry place saying to you tonight? Do you see the holes that you dig will be filled up with overflowing water? My God. Do you see the, the water, the baptism of the spirit, turn into the blood, life, Direction of dimensions of the spirit of the Trinity manifesting in your life. What do you see? What do you see? Do you see yourself being happy? Do you see transactions naturally, spiritually, supernaturally? Do you see direct deposits coming into your life? Do you see bonanzas and suddenlies and quicklies? Do you see many channels and quantities and increasing qualities and quantities of the kingdom of God? Do you see continuous my God, unlimited power sources and surges coming in your life. Do you see God moving on your life on a daily basis, expeditiously? Do you see unlimited creative power taking place? Do you know that you have unlimited resources inside of you? The kingdom of God is in you. Uh, all that untapped potential, as my spiritual mother says. The spiritual mother says all that untapped potential that you have. Are you connected to the eternal God that lives with inside of you? Are you connected to the eternal God that lives inside of the man or woman of God that you have to go to that's like to see Elisha? Sometimes we connected to other people than the person that we're supposed to be connected to. My God. This day and age, people, I just pray for them. We just pray for them because they just, they're not connected. My God. Romans 12 and 12, and that's that government number, 12 and 12, double portion of the government favor. Through Christ, we can approach God and stand in his favor, so we brag because of our confidence that we will receive glory from God. See, it's okay that you brag about the kingdom. We overcome by the blood of them, the word of our testimony. We call them here in Ivy Ruby, Florida, bestimonies. So we can brag about that. Psalms 119, 18 says, uncover my eyes so that I may see the miraculous things in your teachings. See, this is what God is doing. So tonight, God, uncover every single man and woman eyes tonight. Psalms 912 says, teach us to number each of our days so that we, may, that we may grow in wisdom. See that? Let the Lord teach you tonight that you grow in wisdom. 
that you grow, that you go higher, that you excel and propel, and that you grow in the highest kingdom supernatural frequency of God, and that you grow in his love, and that you grow in all the great things that he has for your life, and that you begin to be connected to all the things that he has chosen you for your life, and that you begin to walk in all the things that he has given you, all the power, all the authority, all the newness, walk in that, walk in that power, my God, walk in that anointing, my God, walk in all the things that he has for your life, trust him, know that the blood Going through your veins is the blood of Jesus, that the blood of Christ, the blood of God. The Holy Spirit fire is inside of you. Know that you're obtaining great things in your life. Know that there's portals open right now. Seven channels in your life, the faucets of God. The unexplainable manifestations as these three kings and a people how my God seeing demonstrated in their lives. Oh my God. In closing, the word of the Lord says in Isaiah 12 and 4, joyfully you'll pull up buckets of water from the wells of salvation. Then these men see water coming in the ditches. Uh, and as you do it, see, do it just like they did. You'll say, give thanks to God. Call out his name. Ask him anything. Oh, my God. Shout to the nations. Tell them what he's done. Spread the news of his great reputation. You see that? The seer Isaiah already knew what time it was. Let's read this again in closing. Joyfully, you will pull up buckets of water from the wells of salvation. And as you do it, you will say, give thanks to God. Call out his name. Ask him anything. Shout to the nations. Tell them what he's done. Spread the news of great of his great reputation. My God. We will see you all in two weeks live on our radio show broadcast, broadcast September 12th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can call in at 657-383-1918, 657-383-1918. And the radio show website is www.blogtalkradio.com slash Platinum Ruby. We would love to hear your feedback about this study. Leave a comment below, subscribe to this channel, and share this Bible study with anyone and everyone you know. You can check out our ministry page on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash I'm in Ruby, Florida. And you can also push the link right there. We just want to just motivate you and inspire you, encourage you. And we're just grateful and thankful for all the great things, hallelujah, that God has and that he's already have done in your life. We are so excited about all the great things, oh my God, that he has done. And we thank God for us digging ditches tonight. Father God in Jesus, we glorify you. We thank you, God, for, first of all, we thank you for your sovereign regal favor that you have given us as you've given the three kings because King Jehovah. We thank you for the exceedingly overflow that you have given us, God. We thank you for the kingdom success with kingdom access, God. We thank you for we're walking in kingdom businesses and our kingdom endeavors. We thank you that all things we're doing from this night forward will lead to our success, happiness, and wealth in Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we're attracting one manifestation, blessings, miracles, marvels, oh God, and change one after another on purpose. We're changing our lives tonight, oh God, with gratitude. We know exactly what you desire and require us to do. And we thank you that we're doing it and we're being obedient and we have it in Jesus. We thank you for good health, success, and wellness. We thank you that we're anointed and appointed. We're laying hands on all things in our lives. We're laying hands on anything we desire to see done, God. We're laying hands on everything, God. Everything in our life that looks like it's sick. Everything in our life that looks like it's dead. We prophesy and decree and declare to hear the voice of the sovereign Lord to live, to leap in victory effectively. 
We thank you that it is automatically arising right now. We thank you that we are, we're prophesying to the breath and commanding the breath to breathe in our lives, oh God. We thank you, God, that everything we desire is already here, is automatically done. We thank you, God, that it's completed. We thank you, Lord, now for everything coming swiftly, easily, at velocity, God, speed, the same way that you did with these men, oh God, these three kings. We thank you, God, that we're pulling out our kingdom vortex right now in Jesus. We thank you that everything working out for our good, God, you're opening outstanding doors in our lives and for our favor. God, we thank you that your love is intentional and is ever failing. We're in love with you, God. We thank you so much that you love us. Our subconscious minds aids and assists us to walk in your jacuzzi of your overflow your surplus of wealth on purpose. We thank you, God, that we're connected to your frequencies and that we're, whatever channel we need to take up the bass, the volume, the boom, oh God, the amplifier, God, we're going higher in you, oh God, in Jesus. We thank you, God, that you're allowing us to walk in successful outcomes. We thank you that unexplainable manifestations is taking place right now. We thank you that our unexpected gifts, hidden gifts, oh God, gifts that's dormant, shall arise and live in Jesus. We thank you for the power. We thank you for the authority. We thank you for our health, our peace, and our anointing, and our health and, oh God, dominion, limitless currency in Jesus. We thank you for the degrees of blessing from your Lord. We thank you, oh God, that we're living and having good and prosperous days and long and prosperous life because it is written. We thank you for our daily bread, oh God. We thank you for the manna, the moolah, and your word, our Abba Father. We thank you that our inward man is renewed and refreshed tonight, oh God, in Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that shalom is added unto us on tonight, oh God. We thank you, for Yahweh, so both for being the Lord of hosts in our lives. We thank you, oh God, for the kingdom trust fund naturally and spiritually. We thank you, oh God, that we're walking in our purpose, oh God. We thank you that you are our daddy, Hallelujah, and Jesus. We thank you that you own everything. We thank you, God. We thank you that, oh God, your word will ever fail. It will ever not demonstrate in our life, and it will find us wherever we is. We thank you that you're considering us as you considered the three kings, oh God, in tonight's study. We thank you, oh God, that you live inside of us, and every day is abundant day, and every day is richer and richer and exciting and exciting because we're connected to you. We're quieting out the outer world. We're quieting out the negative voices. We're quieting out demonic forces. Uh, we're quieting out satanic attacks. Uh, we're quieting out all the doubt and the unbelief. We're casting it out now. We're sending it to the dry places in Jesus. Uh, we decree and declare that every cell, organs, and malfunction part of our body, oh God, is 100% healthy, perfect, and strong in Jesus. Uh, and every cell will be rejuvenated by every healthy, loving cell, oh God. We thank you, God, that we are loving you even the more in our darling, our psyche, our soul, oh God. We thank you for the red prints and the sinotypes, uh, and we thank you, oh God, that we rich in all the anointing and not one word will fall to the ground. We glorify you. We love you so much and we thank you for being our Abba and our beloved. And above all things, we are prospering, thriving, and flourishing. And we are in good health as our soul prosper, thrive, and flourish in Jesus. And we thank you that the blessings with happiness of your Lord is making us super abundantly rich, wealthy, and prosperous, and you adding no worry doubt, sorrow, unbelief with it in Jesus. Not one word is falling to the ground. It is done because the word of the Lord said so. Bless you all on tonight. We thank you for tuning in to our I'm a Ruby Florida Network Biblical Expressions Bible Study. We love you all to the heavens and beyond and we will be back in two weeks. Good night all. Agape! Hallelujah.